I'm going to try this yet again. I tried to upload it once, and for mysterious reasons, I was not able to do that. Imagine that. I have a lot of these problems, these kind of weird hacker mysterious reason problems. So I was trying to read a story from this book, Treasury of Fairy Tales. It's a very, very controversial book. It's been banned in many countries. And there's a good story in here. I was reading it to my son because in my household, it's actually child appropriate. And it's called Thumbelina. Once upon a time, a childless woman wanted a little girl very much. So much so that she set aside her fears and begged the help of a witch. A little girl you shall have, dearie, the witch cackled. She gave the woman a seed to plant, and lo and behold, a single flower soon shot up. When the sky blue flower opened, out popped the loveliest and littlest blonde haired girl, no bigger than the woman's thumb. She was named Thumbelina and was given many luxuries such as a walnut shell cradle with a rose petal blanket and a thimble of nectar to drink morning, noon, and evening. One night, a wart-faced toad spied her through the window. What a delightful bride she'll make for my son, croaked the mother toad. The old toad seized the cradle with the sleeping girl in it and hopped off to a nearby stream. Ribbit, croaked her son. Quiet, the mother shushed as she set the cradle on a lily pad, or you'll wake her. At daybreak, Thumbelina stretched, yawned, and saw that something was dreadfully wrong. The mother toad introduced her son to Thumbelina. I just know you two will be happy together, the elder toad croaked. The two toads hopped away to build a new home for the couple, and Thumbelina wept. A school of pike heard her sobs and decided to help. They bit through the stalk of her lily pad, and Thumbelina drifted away on the water. As Thumbelina floated downstream, a black-winged beetle flying overhead noticed her. What a remarkable creature, he thought. I'll bring her home with me. He swooped down and snatched her off to a dim forest. His fellow beetles gathered around and looked at Thumbelina carefully. Ugh, look at all that long, shiny hair, said one. And she has only two legs, said another. The beetles decided that they had no use for such an unattractive thing, and they sent her away, even though the beetle who brought her hoped she could stay. Thumbelina was left to wander alone in the forest as the cold winter winds began to blow. As she wandered, shivering and hungry, Thumbelina stumbled over a small hole in the ground. Who's there? demanded a squeaky voice. But Thumbelina's lips were too frozen to move. Dear, dear, said a field mouse as she poked her nose out of the hole. Come inside before you catch your death. The mouse could be quite friendly when she wanted something, and she offered Thumbelina a home for the winter. But you must keep house and tell stories at tea time, insisted the mouse, and do the same for my neighbor. He's a wealthy mole who, by the way, is looking for a wife. At that instant, a furry head with spectacles poked its pink nose through the entrance. Why, speak of the devil, shrieked the mouse. Mole, allow me to present Thumbelina. Charmed, I'm sure, mumbled the nearsighted mole as he bowed low. Mouse, you simply must see how the new tunnel is coming along. The mole took the mouse and Thumbelina down a dark passageway that he had been digging between their burrows. On the way, the three passed the frozen body of a swallow. Never mind him, Thumbelina, said the mouse. Be glad you have arms instead of wings, muttered the mole, and more sense than to let yourself freeze to death.
That night, Thumbelina went back to where the bird lay. Listening at his breath, she heard the faintest heartbeat. So she covered him with a grass blanket and put her arms around him. After a while, the bird opened his eyes. Where am I? chirped the swallow, coming to his senses. You've saved me. However, can I thank you? Thumbelina promised to nurse the swallow until he was strong enough to fly. Meanwhile, the mouse, who wanted a maid, and the mole, who wanted a wife and a maid, agreed that Thumbelina was just what they were looking for. They decided that when summer came, Thumbelina and the mole would be married. The day came for the swallow to depart. He asked Thumbelina to go with him, but she thought it would be unkind to leave after the mouse had been so nice to her. The swallow sadly twittered goodbye and flew away. Down below, the mouse called for yet another tea time story. And when Thumbelina returned, the mouse told her the mole had asked for her hand in marriage. Thumbelina refused to marry the mole, but the mouse insisted that she must. Soon, the wedding day arrived, and so did the mole, wearing a frock coat and carrying two plain gold bands. Poor Thumbelina ran above ground. Oh, why didn't I fly away when I had the chance, she cried. Suddenly, a winged shadow passed overhead. Better late than never, called the swallow. Will you come with me now? Thumbelina joyfully climbed on his back, and the two flew south to a magical land of clear waters, powdery beaches, and flowers that blossomed all through the year. The swallow lowered Thumbelina onto a daisy and flew away. The girl looked right and left and noticed a handsome young man perched on a nearby flower. He had transparent wings and a gold crown, and best of all, he was just about Thumbelina's size. Their eyes met, and they fell in love instantly. I am king of the daisies, said the young man, gesturing toward little winged lords and ladies who peeked from behind flower petals. I have thousands of subjects, but none like you. Be my queen, he begged as he kissed Thumbelina's hand. I will gladly be your wife, Thumbelina replied. The king's subjects flew to Thumbelina and presented her with a pair of gossamer wings that fit her perfectly. The couple then soared up into the cloudless blue sky where flying in ever-widening circles, the loyal swallow waited patiently. 